A lot of girls here. I noticed the lady's like a manly guy, right, ma'am? You're like a man. You're like a guy with a job and pubic hair. You know, I'm working on it. I, uh, I'm not a manly guy. Uh, not a manly guy. Uh, I actually dated a girl for seven years. She dumped me out of the blue because she said I wasn't manly enough for her. And at the time, I liked her so much, I was like, I'll do anything you want. What do you want me to do? Work out? Join the army? Hit you? Whatever you need, I'll do it. I'll do anything. <laughs> and she was like, look, I just need a manlier guy. I was like, tell me what you want and I'll do it. She's like, all right, fine. I want a guy who will pay for everything, support me financially, always drive, always open the door for me, protect me. I'm like, let me stop you right there. Not a man. <laughs> Good Lord, of course you want to date that guy. That guy sounds amazing. I would date that guy, you know? My friends would be like, hey, Mark, are you gay now? I'm like, hold on. You haven't met Jeff. <laughs> this guy's incredible, all right? He already beat up my high school bully, paid off my student loans. We're getting lobster tonight, all right? God, he treats me well, but the sex is brutal. <laughs> brutal sex. Get nervous around this time of year because beach season is right about to happen. Maybe we're already in it, uh, which is horrifying. Ladies, can I get a silence? Thank you. <laughs> you are ready. As a female, you have to make that critical decision between the one piece or the two piece. This past summer, I went with the three piece, <laughs> which is just a men's business suit. <laughs> that I rocked down to the water because it covered up my main problem area. Ah! <laughs> Which is being a woman. Still got it. <laughs> Low self-esteem. I still have that. <laughs> I got a call from a friend of mine and he reminded me about uh, a shitty prank I pulled on a friend when I was 19 and I was driving home from a show, right? And uh, I'm in the passenger seat and um, my friend Will, he's a comedian. Will's driving a car. He's also white, right? And uh, the car hits a red light, and it stops. And I saw a group of black dudes about to cross the street. So I was like, oh, this is going to be funny. So I rolled my window down, and I yelled out, cross the street faster, you monkeys! And I ducked my head. I ducked my head. <laughs> I just did this. <laughs> Will was like, no, no, why? Why? No, why? Did, no, I said, no, no. And I was like, this is funny, right? This is funny. I thought the dudes already left, so I picked my head back up. But they were still in the middle of the street, and one of the dudes looked at me like, ew, because it looked like I was sucking this racist dude's dick. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it looked like. He's <laughs> like, this nigga's progressive. Hello. My name is Joe Perra. My sex move of choice is called the maple syrup. This one... After making love to a girl, you let her fall peacefully asleep, <laughs> and you leave. You go outside to the woods behind your house, and you gather the buckets of maple sap that's been collecting from the trees. You then bring it inside and boil it down on the stove, extracting the hard sugars. Then, the next morning, you serve it to her over a hot stack of buttermilk pancakes. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but Jesus. it's worth it. I've never paid for sex. Anybody ever pay for it? Oh, cameraman, give me a wink. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with paying for sex, creepy guy. I really don't. You know, because... Sex is just a need like anything else. Why is that the one need we have where it's frowned upon if you pay for it? We don't do that with any other needs. You know, no one's ever like, ah, oh, come on, man. You paid for those groceries? You're a young guy. You should be farming. <laughs> Get out there. Plant some seeds. 